Making disciples. We are developing leaders. And changing lives. Creating churches, unchurched and de-churched people love to attend. We are Relevant Kingdom Center. Hey, what's up, RKC? What an amazing day to be alive and well. We're so excited to have so many of you tuned in with us for our Relevant Sunday online experience. We know you guys had an amazing Thanksgiving weekend. Some of you right now, you're still overflowing um, where you're, you're filled, you're full of that physical food. But this weekend, we just wanted to come because we understand that it's important for us to, while we get spirit, uh, physical food, we should also get spiritual food as well. And so this weekend, we're, we came to feed you, um, feed your, your spirit mind with the Word of God. And so we're believing God that this ex entire experience is going to be a blessing to you. Well, if you're just joining us, we're continuing a message series called As It Is in Heaven. That's where we've been breaking down the Our Father prayer over the last few weeks. It's been absolutely incredible. I'm sure so many of you, as a matter of fact, if this series has been a blessing to you, just drop a message down in the chat. Just, just drop an emoji down in the chat. Let us know um, that th how this series has changed your life. Some of you have never saw the Our Father prayer 
this way. But today we're going to continue. Well, actually, we're going to conclude this series. And our lead pastor, Pastor Dory Thomas, has a message that's going to bless your heart. Here's what we want you to do before we go ahead and get started. Go ahead and click the share button for those of you watching us on Facebook. Invite a friend. If you're on our online campus, our service host is going to put a link down in the chat right below this video. Go ahead, click that invite invite button. Get as many persons as possible to tune in to today's experience with you because we believe that God is going to bless your hearts and their hearts as well. Before we get into the message, we want to take you live to our campus in Port Charlotte, Florida as we enter a time of worship. Welcome to our Relevant Worship and Praise Online. I want you to put your hands together right there behind the screen and help me lift them up if you know that there's nothing God can't do. Come on. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Come on, y'all. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 Lord. Here we go, we're going to say, I'm not going to live by what I see. No, I'm not going to live by what I feel. Cause deep down I know that he's there with me. I know that he can do anything. Come on, say, through you, I can do anything. I can do all things, because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open, strongholds are open. I am living. Nothing is impossible. Come on, y'all. Do you believe that today? Nothing is impossible. No, Lord. Put those hands together and say, I'm not going to live by what I see. Oh, no, Lord. I'm not going to live by how I feel. That you're here with me. Yes, you are. You can do, you can do anything. Say, through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Come on, if you believe that, slap those hands like this. Oh, Lord. Come on, just tell them, I believe. I believe in you, God. Come on, say, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, Woo! I believe, I believe in you, say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you, through you, I can do anything, I can do all this, cause it's you who gives me strength, nothing is impossible, through you, I can do anything, and I can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength, nothing is impossible, through you, blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken, I am living by faith, nothing is impossible, oh, I believe, I believe, come on, say, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. Come on, if you know that you believe in God, come on, just tell him, Lord, I believe in you. 
Father, we trust in you, and it's our heart's desire just to be closer to you, Lord. Come on, if that's your heart's desire today, I just want you to say, Lord, draw me close, closer than I've ever been before. Father, we want to hear your voice. We want to know you, Lord. Oh. Into your arms, I'm drawing near again to dwell. our heart's desire. It's our only heart's desire. Love. Oh. No. Draw me close, closer than before, closer than I've ever been. Come on, just tell him. Oh, draw me close, draw me close, closer than before, closer than I've ever been. Yes, Jesus, help me shake it into your arms. Into your I'm drawing near again. I'm drawing near oh, again. to dwell with you. Dwell yes, with it's my only heart's desire, only heart Lord. Desire. Oh, I need your presence, Lord. It's my only heart's desire. Oh, that's it's my, only heart's desire. Oh, that's it's my only heart's cry. But all I can do, Jesus, say. All I can do is fall on my knees and cry. cry. Cleanse me, Lord, and purify my spirit, Jesus. Oh, I need you to purify my heart. Oh, draw me close, draw me close, closer than before, closer than I've ever been. On. I hear you right there behind the screen. Say, draw me, Jesus. Oh, draw me close. Closer than before. Closer than I've ever been. Oh, Jesus, I'm not satisfied. So draw me close. Closer than before. Closer than I've ever been. Lord, hear the cry of your people. Lord, draw us closer to you. Closer than before. Closer than we've ever been. Oh, I'm not satisfied, Lord. So wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Lord, wrap me in your arms. Come on, if you want to be wrapped, just say, Wrap me in your arms. I want to be. I want to be held close and Lord. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice say, Wrap me in. Oh, never be afraid. Lord, I'm here with you. Come on, he's telling somebody, Don't be afraid. I'm here with you, my brother. I'm here with you, my sister. Oh, wrap me, Jesus. Wrap me in your arms. Oh, and take me to that place. Come on, to that secret place. Where I can be with you. You can make me like you, Jesus. Oh, take me, Lord. Come on and take me to your place. Oh, where I can hear your voice clearly, God. 
Hope you enjoyed that awesome time and worship. Thank you so much, Lady Shariai, for ushering in the presence of God. Uh, what we want you to do, if you haven't already done so, or if you're just joining us, go ahead and click that share button. If you're blessed, share this broadcast right now. Get somebody else. Call up a friend. Pick up your phone. Send a WhatsApp. Um, send a DM to one of your friends, a family member, a loved one, a co-worker. Get them to come online and worship with you because this experience could possibly change their life. Well, we're now going to turn it over to our lead pastor now who's going to bless your hearts with the word of God. God wants to hear about your day. God wants to hear about what makes you laugh. He wants to hear about what makes you sad. He knows the innermost parts of your heart. But for a long time, it's been, one, it's been a one-way relationship. It's been him reaching out, but you haven't taken the moment to, to, to just um, recognize who he is. It's okay. I, I came today to let some of you know that it's okay to say, Daddy, I messed up. It's okay to say, Daddy, I need help. I'm, 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 I'm in a place right now where I'm broken. Daddy, I need you. You know, here's what's so disheartening that so many times we can come to church week after week and we could spend so much time serving. We could spend so much time giving, giving to the poor. We could spend all the time on worshiping and singing about this God, but not actually knowing him. We sing in all the songs, we quoting all the scriptures, but we miss the most important thing. And that is truly knowing the father. And so I want to ask you again. Do you know him? And he is a God that is going to cause the impossible to start taking place in your life. I know it doesn't look good. I know things may not look the way you expected them to look. But he is a God that's got all authority. He's the kind of God that can cause seas to be parted. That you can walk on dry ground. Come on up here and testify Israel. And tell them that Pharaoh's army was behind you. The Red Sea was in front of you. But all of a sudden your God was able to part the seas and cause you to walk on dry ground what am I trying to tell you today when Jesus told his disciples that when you say this prayer recognize that your God arts in heaven he was telling his disciples recognize that your God sits in a place of authority that your God sits in a place that is above all others above all rulers above all powers of the earth your God is a God of authority somewhere out there we envision God amongst the stars disconnected and disinterested in our own reality he remains in a long-awaited dream world while we stay unimpressed and unchanged but what if heaven isn't so much the place where God resides as it is where his presence lives breathes and walks what if somewhere out there can be right here, invading our hearts, souls, and the world around us? What if heaven met earth? Hey guys, man, I am so elated and excited that I get to come and I get to share the word with you today. 
Last weekend, our campus pastor did an incredible job, as you saw from our Rewind. And of course, this entire series has just been life-changing. And so do me a favor. I want you to go ahead and share this message. I want you to like it. I want you to share it. I want you to help us to get the word to the world. If you're on our online campus, man, we want to say welcome to Relevant Online. If you're focused on Facebook and you're streaming with us on our Facebook page, we invite you to possibly jump over to Relevant Online at live.relevantkingdomcenter.com. There we've got an incredible experience where we've got live prayer hosts, service hosts, and prayer partners that are waiting to agree with you and connect with you. It's a whole different experience. But if you're on Facebook, we would love for you to push this on your timeline. Even consider starting a watch party. Man, today is going to be amazing and life-changing. I believe that this word is getting ready to touch your heart in a way like I believe you've never been touched before because of the presence of God that I believe will come through these computer screens, through your tablets, through your phones on today. Of course, today we're sharing a message that I believe is important for every Christ follower, not just Christ followers, but for those of you that may know not that may not know God today. I believe that this message will show you the importance of making sure that you're in right standing with God. And so if you know somebody that may not know the Lord, this is the moment you get to share this word with them. This is the time that you get to share this moment with them. And so we encourage you to do so well. We're getting ready to go into the word today. And of course, we're going to be doing um, the last sermon in the series. And, and this message today, I believe, is going to be pro pragmatic, prophetic, profound, but yet practical enough for you to hold on to. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6. First of all, we have two texts that we're going to be coming from today. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, it says this. So then, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then Matthew chapter 16, verse 1 to 4, it says this. This is a narrative of the Pharisees coming to Jesus to test Jesus. The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning today will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. Here's what Jesus said. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the time. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. Today, if I could tag a topic to the text, it will be your kingdom come. My subtopic today is the sign of the time. The sign of the time. Father, I pray that today I decrease you, increase. Let your spirit move through these computer screens, through these tablets, on the internet. Father, wherever your people may be watching this from, I pray that there would be an anointing that would arrest today that will make the word of God sound, that will make the God, word of God firm and that it would touch and transform and change them in a powerful and a mighty way in jesus name we pray and everybody say amen amen hallelujah thy kingdom come you know i believe that we are indeed just residents here on earth but we are citizens in heaven let me say it again. We are residents on earth, but we are citizens in heaven. You know, I'm a resident of the United States. I reside in the, re in the United States, and I am a resident here. But my citizenship, my earthly citizenship, is in the Bahamas. I've got more privileges. I've got more rights in the Bahamas than I do here in the United States because I am only a resident here. I can vote in the Bahamas. I can, I can do things in the Bahamas as a citizen that a resident of the Bahamas cannot do, but I cannot exercise those same kind of powers or rights or privileges here in the United States of America because I'm not a citizen of this, this country. I am only a resident of this country. And I just want to say to you, you've got to make sure then, 
understand who you are and who you are and the kind of power that you've got resident on the inside of you. Can I just tell you watching us today that you may be a resident here on earth, but if you're a Christ follower, if he's in your heart, if you're connected to the true vine, I want you to know that while you may be a resident on earth, you are a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. Abraham searched for a city whose foundation and builder was God himself. Can I just tell you, we are only passing through. We are not going to be building houses. We're just pitching a tent because we're passing through. And I believe that right now, people have got to come to the conclusion. People have got to come to the understanding that they are not citizens of the world. They are only residents of the world. But here's the great thing. Your citizenship in heaven translates to mean that you've got power here on earth. That's why Jesus said that I give you the keys of the kingdom. That whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind here on earth will be bound also in heaven. You've got authority. You've got power. You've got the ability to do things. Amen. That are supernatural here on this earth because of your citizenship. Because of your citizenship in heaven even though you were a resident on earth. Somebody just say, I'm only a resident. I'm only a resident. But how much of you grateful and thankful that you are also a citizen? Now, because I am a citizen of heaven and I am only a resident on earth, it is important and it's imperative for me to understand the kind of times and the seasons that we're living in. It's important for me to understand that, watch this, the kingdom of God will not just be in a spiritual way established on earth, but eventually there is coming a point in time where we will see the culmination of the return of our Lord and Savior, where he will now establish his kingdom here on on earth where he will cause the governments to become his government hallelujah where he will rule and we will reign with him here on earth through the kingdom of God that will be established as a result of the people of God and I want you to know that he is coming back again I just need somebody to understand this, that right now, I believe that because I am only a resident here and I've got a citizenship in heaven, that my citizenship is going to have me in a position, in a place where I will rule, where I will reign with Christ here on earth. And so now, because I'm a citizen, I've got to be, watch this, knowledgeable. I've got to understand what my constitution says. I've got to understand what this word declares. I've got to know where I am on God calendar because he made a promise to his apostles and his disciples then he was being taken up he says I go to prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also and because of this dynamic because of this powerful truth I've got to remember now that I'm only passing through and at the end of the day there is a timeline when we may not know that time but watch this there are signs of that time where Jesus is coming back for a church without spot and without blemish I wonder if I got any believers on this stream today that know, watch this, that he is coming back again. That is why I believe right now and I'm the firm conviction that every Christ follower should have the desire and the ability to determine the signs of the time. We should have insight and foresight. What is insight? Insight is the ability to understand what's going on on the inside, to, to be, watch this, uh, introspective, to understand and have a deep understanding of things that are taking place on the inside. But foresight is the ability to understand what's going to happen in the future and be prepared for what's to come. And so here is the thing. Thing. I believe that right now, more than anything else, that the insight and the foresight that we have should be going to another level. We should have insight and foresight, hear me, to the prophetic proclamations of scripture that point towards our hope of a kingdom that is getting ready to come. Hallelujah. If you're prophetic, watch this then, you won't be panicked. That is why you've got to have a deep understanding of the signs of the time, of our kingdom, of the kingdom of our God that will come. Because here's the thing, prophetic people, people that understand the signs of the times, people that understand what God's doing, they are not, watch this, panicked, they're at peace. If you're prophetic, you won't be panicked. Let me say it again. If you're prophetic, you will not be panicked. And watch this. When you're prophetic and when you're in tune with what God's doing, he will begin to speak to you in ways that he will give you specific strategy. 
He will direct your steps and put your heart and your mind at peace. That's why I'm not worried. That's why I'm not fearful. That's why I'm not concerned about the things that are happening around me. Why? Because I understand that we are in a prophetic time, that we are on, the, on a place and in a moment on the culmination of when our Lord and Savior is getting ready to return for his church. And I've got a hope. Hallelujah. My heart is ready. I'm in the right place and I am rejoicing even even though there may be calamity around us in this world, we understand, watch this, that there is a hope, that there is a future, that God has promised us that we will reign, that we will rule, and that we will have authority and dominion with him. And I cannot wait for that moment. And so if you're prophetic, everybody say prophetic. I didn't say pathetic, I said prophetic because prophetic people are at peace, but pathetic people will be panicked. Hallelujah. And so right now, I believe that God is getting ready to speak to your heart, your mind, and your soul. And he's about to give you strategy. He's about to give you direction. He's about to put your heart and your mind at peace because you understand who you are, who you are, and what's happening around you. You are, you are in, in step with the signs of the time. When we consider King David, King David had surrounding him men, the Bible tells us, from the tribe of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12, verse 13. Watch this. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. And these men, watch this, y'all, had the understanding, or all these men understood what? The signs of the time. Now, here's this. Because they were prophetically inclined, because they were in tune with the signs of the time, not just the things that were happening around them, um, insight, the insight that they have, but they had some type of supernatural foresight so that they could prepare for what was ahead because they were prophetic men and they understood the signs of the time. The Bible says that they knew the best course for Israel to take. Can I just tell you why you've got to be prophetic and understand that there is a kingdom that's coming? It's because you will understand what's the best course to take in this moment while everybody's freaking out, while everybody's panicked, while everybody's confused and concerned. You're you're able to be at peace because watch this you know which course you will take I believe that even in the midst of all of this crisis and this craziness that's taking place that God is speaking to his people you've just got to have your ears and your heart positioned in the right place so that you can hear him and when you hear him he'll give you insight and direction on the steps that you should take on the things that you should do somebody say I want to know Lord I, I want to know I want to know what you're doing hallelujah there's a song that says Lord whatever you're doing in this season don't do it without me I want to be like the sons of Issachar I want to be hallelujah like these men of, of the tribe of Issachar that understood what you were doing that understood the signs of the time and knew which course was best to take even now, I want to say that I believe that God is getting ready to speak to your heart, speak to your life, and he's getting ready to tell you exactly what steps that you should take in this moment and in this time. You've just got to make sure, watch this, that you turn the noise of the world down and turn the voice of God up loudly so that you can hear what he is doing, so that you can hear that even when he breathes, you understand it and you know his voice and a stranger's voice you won't follow in this time because you know where you are prophetically and you're expecting his kingdom to come the bible says this that the wisdom of the prudent is watch this guys to understand his ways but the folly of fools is deceit i want you to hold on to that word deceit because the wisdom the bible says of the prudent i believe that right now in this time if we know that there is a kingdom that is coming that we have not only got to be prophetic but we've got to be prudent and we've got to make sure that we understand what's happening because fools will be deceived in this moment and in this time Time. And so right now, I believe more than anything that this time calls for wisdom. This time calls for us to be prophetic. This time calls for us to be prudent so that we could understand our ways. Ephesians, Paul, when he's writing to the Ephesians church, to the church of Ephesus, he says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but watch this, understanding what the will of the Lord is. Here's the thing. 
I know not everybody could handle these kind of messages because this kind of message calls for maturity. And I believe that more than anything else right now, it's time for the people of God to come off of the diet of junk food that we've had and start to mature, hallelujah, from the milk of the word and start to desire the meat of the word. Because watch this. The, the solid food that God's getting ready to pour into people that are going to be prophetic, that are going to be in top and in tune with the prophetic, the solid food that God's getting ready to give his people will require maturity. You've got to be mature to understand the signs of the time. If you are truly expecting your citizenship to come down and you are going to rule and reign with your king because his kingdom will indeed come, you've got to now say to yourself, I've got to be mature enough to understand what it is he's doing because solid food, hear me good, is for the mature. Who watch this by constant use have trained their senses. In other words... Watch this. You're in a place now where you're constantly training your spiritual senses so that you could understand what God is doing in this moment and in this time. And when you constantly train your spiritual senses, you're doing so. Watch this so that you could distinguish between good and evil according to Hebrews 5 verse 14. But here is the problem and here is the sad reality about our day and time. And that is most Christ followers have allowed themselves to fall into the trap of the enemy and they are on their way to destruction because they have allowed distraction let me say it again they are not being prudent they are not prophetically inclined they understand how to tell the weather and they understand as Jesus said how to deal with natural things but they're not prophetically inclined enough and as a result of the enemy watch this he has crept in unawares and he has caused the church he's caused the people of God to now get so distracted that it's leading to our destruction and so I believe that more than anything else else we have found ourselves in a time where we've allowed ourselves to enter the destruction of distraction the destruction of distraction that has affected our insight and blurred our foresight we are not focused the way we should be focused because the enemy has now caused us watch this to put our focus on temporal things alone Hallelujah. Because now, instead of hearing the mature things of God, instead of understanding where we are prophetically, you would rather hear about a house. You would rather hear about a car. You would rather hear about how your bank account is going to be blessed. Now, hear me good. I believe that God will put favor on your life. I believe that God will bless you in your coming out and in your coming in. As, while, as long as we occupy earth, I believe the favor of God should rest upon you. But I believe that we've got to be balanced and stuff to, enough to know that we should not just be focused on these temporal things because we're just passing through because in this moment right now your car doesn't matter your house doesn't matter what matters is your heart and your relationship with God because this this pandemic is not prejudice to anybody this pandemic doesn't care about the size of your house. It doesn't care about the kind of car you drive. It doesn't care about how big your bank account is. You've got to understand right now, amen, that the enemy has caused the church to be so focused on temporal things. Amen, that watch this. We have allowed ourselves to be distracted by these temporal things, that we have missed the groanings that are taking place, the contractions that we're starting to feel now that is pointing towards the hope of our cause. The Bible says in Romans 8 that the earth groans, that the earth is in contraction because she is getting ready to give birth. And so that there would be a manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. But we have allowed ourselves to be distracted. Yeah, you would rather hear about your car and, uh, and your house, but, but I believe now God is switching the church to a place now where we desire the solid, mature food so that we can grow, so that our immune system as the body of Christ can be strengthened, so that we can ward off the attacks, the attacks that will come, hallelujah, to try to break the body down. And so watch this, you cannot be able to fight off some of the things that the enemy would bring your way, Just living on a diet of junk food.
You've got to now say, God, I want to hear your word. I want to be in tune with your word. I want to hear the truth of your word. Because while I may not like the truth, I understand that the truth is what will set me free. And so right now, because we've been allowing ourselves to be distracted by temporal things, we are missing the contractions that are taking place. And these contractions that are taking place right now in this earth, hallelujah, that we may deem and identify as crisis. It's really contractions, hallelujah, that's pointing, watch this, to the hope of our calling that his kingdom is surely coming. And again, while I'm a show of firm believer that while we're on earth, we should occupy earth until he comes. I believe that we've got to be incredibly balanced so that we could be prepared for the culmination of the return of our king. Because while we are res residents on earth, we are citizens in heaven. Philippians 3 verse 20 tells us, but our citizenship is of where? It is of heaven. So we cannot hear me good. Come here if you're on Facebook. Come here if you're on our online campus. We cannot allow ourselves. We cannot afford ourselves to be caught up in distractions because it will be our destruction if we get caught with no oil in our lamps. Yee. Let me say that one more time. Right now, we cannot be foolish to the point that we are caught with no oil in our lamps. We've got to have oil in our lamps. And I believe that there is a fresh anointing because there is a reformation that is taking place right now, even within the body of Christ. And God is getting ready to release a fresh anointing, new oil, hallelujah, on his people so that there would be a harvest that will come in in this moment in time because the kingdom of God is getting ready to take place and be established here on this earth. I believe that God is getting ready to pour out a fresh anointing and I don't know about you but I want to be in the right place I want to be in the right position so that I don't get caught without oil in my lamp but that my oil will keep my fire burning until the day heaven's hero and earth's emancipator shows up again come on now somebody look at your neighbor if you're sitting next to him in your house come on nudge your husband hallelujah shake your kid and say, don't get caught with no oil in your lamp. Hallelujah. Don't get caught with no oil in your lamp. This is what Jesus' problem was with the Pharisees. Here's what he says to them in our main text. He says, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the time. You can interpret natural things, but your discernment is dull when it comes to spiritual things. Now, Pastor Dury, what is our response then to all of this? Here's our response to all this. I just want to tell us now more than anything else, if we are expecting the kingdom of God to come, we got to say, hallelujah, it this way, you got to stay woke. I need somebody just to type that. Come on, stay woke, stay, stay woke. I believe that right now it is important for the people of God, for Christ followers to stay woke. Hallelujah. And what do I mean? The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 21 verse 36, it says this, but stay awake at all times. What does that mean, Pastor? I, I shouldn't sleep. I shouldn't sleep at night. See, he's not talking just about physical sleep. He's talking about making sure that you are, watch this, spiritually aware of what's going on. That you are spiritually in tune of what's going on. That your mind, hallelujah, understands how to discern the time so that your mind would be in the right place. That you're not lured to sleep, hallelujah, by the things of this world. He says that stay awake at all times. And how do I do that? He says a part of staying awake is a part of being in a posture of prayer because he says praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the son of man jesus tells us he says listen i need you to stay awake in this time can i just tell you this whole message today is simply about telling us how important and vital it is for us to stay woke we can't allow ourselves to get distracted by all of the things that's going on on cnn and zns and our news we cannot allow ourselves to get distracted by the noise of this world we've got to stay woke hallelujah it's time for the church to get woke and to stay woke watch this 
because I believe that the current events that we're seeing are pointing to the end and they are not just coincidence. Let's look at what the scripture tells us about indicators really quickly about heaven's heroes and earth emancipator coming back again. Let's look at some of the things that, that the, 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 the scripture tells us. Watch 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5. It says this, but understand this, that in the what last days there will come what? Times of difficulty. Do you agree that we are living in difficult times? I believe that I would get a great amen right there. These are difficult times for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money. Watch this proud and arrogant. I said this last weekend on our Saturday Night Live experience here from our Florida campus. I said this, that we can see even this indicator in leaders around the world. When you look at Governor Cuomo from New York, one of the things that he made the statement in saying was that, watch this, we were the ones that curbed the COVID-19 cases in New York. God did not do that. Can I just tell you, we are seeing more pride and more arrogance, but I want to tell the leaders of the world, I want to tell the Governor Cuomo, of the world that watch this if it had not been for God I believe that we would be in a worse place now than we found ourselves in and because this thing was bigger than man's wisdom we have no idea how this thing works if it had not been for God I wonder if I got anybody on the stream that could declare if it had not been for God my family wouldn't have been kept if it had not been for God I would not been safe secure and seen if it had not been for God but the Bible says that there will be times when people will become proud and arrogant. Watch it. Abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpeaceable, un unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having watched this an appearance of godliness, but denying their power, the power thereof. Avoid such people. There ain't no oil in that lamp. Watch what Matthew 24 verse 6 says. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you are not a lamb. For this must take place. But the end is not yet. Can you just imagine right now what's happening? You've got to be in tune with the contractions. You see right now even what we're going through. We can see that tension is brewing to the, to, in the direction towards China. There is tension there. There is there's a tension because the earth now and the world. And leaders around the world are now pointing their fingers at China. Saying that this was an intentional leak. Not only that, you see from the South African government, there is a bit of pressure being placed on China by the way their, their citizens are being treated who are residents in China. I'm telling you that right now we've got to be prepared because we can see tensions brew that will cause there to be not just rumors of war, but there can be a war that will take place if we are not careful. Watch this. This is indicators. I'm trying to show you guys that there are indicators that we're living in the prophetic time calendar of God that we would be able to discern the time because we know the kingdom is coming. Watch this. The Bible says in Luke 21 verse 11, there will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences. Stop. What is um, COVID-19? COVID-19 right now is a pestilence. It is a plague. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Luke 21 verse 11. Watch this. And Matthew it says this. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And on the earth distress of nations. In perplexity. Because the nations are confused right now as to what's going on. Because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting with fear. And with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens are shaken. But here's the other thing I believe that the Bible tells us that the good news of this gospel shall be preached to the end of the earth and then the end will come. Do you understand how this whole situation is positioned? The body of Christ has positioned the bride of Christ. Now here we are. We're infiltrating the world wide web and the internet. We're going places that we could have never gone on planes. We're going places that we could have never gone on boats and trains. We're going into the into the into the utter most parts of the earth right now because we're using a technological a technological advance that our great grandparents could have only dreamed of we're living in a prophetic time where the kingdom of God is coming and I came to tell somebody today 
that is important for the people of God to stay woke. Pastor, I believe that I am not just a citizen of the country that I was born in, but I am a citizen of heaven. I'm a resident of heaven. If you are a resident of heaven, it is important for you to not just pay attention then to what's going on in the world around us, but for you to get in a position where you are prophetically inclined to the things that are happening because prophetic people are not panic people. Prophetic people understand that there is a hope and there is a future that God has for them. Prophetic people understand that in this moment, because they belong to Christ, that nothing that is not like him can come that like him can come near their dwelling prophetic people understand that they can walk through the waters and it won't overcome them walk through the fires and they won't come out smelling like smoke prophetic people know watch this that he will be with them like the mountains surrounding jerusalem prophetic people know hallelujah that yea, though they walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, they don't have to fear no evil because God is with them. Prophetic people know, watch this, that at the end of the day and when the story is done, when the narrative is finished, when the smoke is clear, hallelujah, and the battle is over, they are going to be standing on the winning side. And I came to tell somebody today, I am glad that my citizenship is of heaven. I am glad that I am only a resident on earth because regardless of what's taking place on this earth right now I know that nothing but good is prepared for my future and I wonder if anybody could rejoice because you know that there are good things prepared for your future hallelujah and so here is what I have determined to do I've determined to stay woke, hallelujah. I've determined to be like the sons of Issachar that understand how to discern the signs of the time so that I can know which course to take. I have decided that God, I want to be so prophetic that I've got insight that goes to a next level. I've got discernment that goes to a next level so that when you breathe, I can feel you breathe because I won't move unless you move. And like Dr. Paul Martin declared through song, Lord, whatever you're doing in the season I don't want you to do it without me because I know that the kingdom of heaven is coming and when you pray pray this thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven the kingdom is coming can I just tell somebody and I'm glad I am only a resident of earth but I am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven I got to calm myself down. I feel like jumping through this screen. Hallelujah. I feel like jumping through this screen. But here we go. What's the conclusion of the matter? Because I know that the kingdom of com is coming and I'm done. Because I know that the kingdom of co is coming. Here's what Jesus told us in the book of Matthew. Verse 24 to 42 to 44. It says this. Therefore, what he says, stay awake. For you do not know what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not let his house be broken into. Therefore, to conclude it, you must be, watch this, ready. Pastor Parsley, hallelujah, one of my spiritual fathers, Pastor Parsley, when I spent time in the cave, he used to say it like this, get right or get left. Because ready or not, here the kingdom comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get right or get left. Come on now, somebody. I'm here to tell you if you don't know God, you've got to get right today. I'm here to tell you that if you've stepped out of position, if you're not in the posture where you could hear, hallelujah, the voice of God, it's time for you to get yourself ready and prepared. It's time for you to wake up. If you allowed yourself to be distracted by the things that the enemy wanted to lead to your destruction, it's time to wake up up he says stay woke he say therefore you must be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour where you do not know here's what john the revelator says as we close he says this remember then what you receive and heard watch what he says keep it don't let nobody the devil don't let the world don't let the critics on facebook steal it Hallelujah. He says, everything that I've spoken to you, everything that you've read in this word, he says, keep it. Because in this moment, in this time, even the very elect will be deceived. He says, keep it and watch this. Repent. Make sure that you're right. 
and in, in good standing with God, the most important thing, more than a house and more than a car, he says, repent. If you will not wake up, you hear me? I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. The kingdom is coming. I'm ready. I'm prepared. I'm hopeful. I'm prayerful. Because great things are about to take place for the body of Christ. I'm a citizen of heaven. A resident on earth. And so I'm going to stay prophetic. I am going to stay in tune with the signs of the time. As I await the culmination and the return of my Lord and Savior. Ready or not. Here the kingdom comes. And I sure hope that you're ready to meet him. I sure hope that you're in position and in place because God is going to speak to you specifically and strategically is what I believe. As we get ready to go, I want you to know that we're going to pray for you. If you do not know the Lord is your Savior, you want to give him your life today. Come on, push that hand. Push that hand. Push that hand because I believe that God wants to bless you. I believe that God wants to do something significant in your life. Come on, push that hand. Let us know on, if you're on Facebook in the DM, let us know on the, on the streams chat that, hey, I want to give my heart to the Lord. If you want to rededicate your heart to the Lord, come on, we want to pray with you today. Father, I thank you that as your church and as your people, we will stay woke. I thank you that we would understand how to discern the signs of the time because indeed we are living in the culmination where the earth is contracting. And Father God, we are getting ready to see the birth of the kingdom of God, not just in a spiritual sense, but in a natural sense. And so God, help us to be ready for your return. In Jesus' name, I'm going to hand it over to our campus pastor, Pastor Carson there in the Bahamas. God bless you. What an incredible message today as we concluded this series as it is in heaven. God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Listen, we know that that's your prayer. You're waiting for, for, for God to invade earth with heaven with everything from heaven with the joy the peace the blessings it's all yours today and that's what we just wanted to come and encourage you and if you're visiting us for the first time this is the part of our service where we get to worship god with our giving as we want you to know that you don't necessarily have to give today but we simply wanted this experience to be a blessing to you and so if this is your first time you don't have to give today but just receive the word of God. But here's what we also want you to know that if you say that you are so blessed by today's experience, that that message touched your heart, that that message was a reminder. And if you want to partner with us to help us get this gospel to the ends of the world, then we are not gonna hold back your blessing and we're gonna ask you to go ahead and so um, as your heart desires. But here coming across the screen are a few ways that you guys can give. Of course, you can give through Cash App. Um, that's RKC Florida. You can also visit us on our website, relevantkingdomcenter.com forward slash give. Our service hosts are going to put a link right down there in the chat. So you guys go ahead and click there and sow your seeds. Um, for those of you here in the Bahamas, at our Bahamas campus, of course, you guys know that you can give through online banking or you can stop by our office through the week to drop off your seeds. But listen, it's been an incredible experience. It's been an incredible time with each and every single one of you. We want to see you again. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Um, we hope that you guys are continuing to have a great weekend. Listen, we miss you. We can't wait to gather again physically in our sanctuary. But until then, um, we want you guys to continue to connect with us online. Um, here are just a few announcements of what's taking place through the week so that you guys can partner with us. Of course, tomorrow, tomorrow, that's Monday, we have our Gap Standards prayer time. That's 5 a.m. every Monday. 5 a.m. You can join us on Zoom. Um, we're going to be putting a link down in the chat so you guys can go ahead and register and sign up for those meetings. But that's 5 a.m. every Monday. Listen, prayer is extremely important for us in our Christian walk, especially during this unprecedented time. And so we want to keep praying as a church and we're continuing to lift each and every single one of you up in prayer. So again, that's Monday morning at 5 a.m. 
Um, secondly, we have our WWE. That's our Wednesday Bible studies. Every week we jump into the word of God together. And so we're encouraging each and every single one of you to go ahead, sign up for our Bible studies. That also is on Zoom. And so we're looking forward to seeing each and every single one of you there. Well, that's it. Just one final reminder. Um, if you're not already connecting with us on social media, go ahead and follow us. That's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Um, we're also on Twitter. You go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, by the way, so that you stay updated when we post our sermons or sermon clips or any other announcements. But listen, it's such a pleasure that you chose to join and worship with us today. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same place, the most powerful place on the planet, Relevant Kingdom Center. Thank you for watching Relevant Online. Consider becoming a relevant partner with us and sow a financial gift of any amount to help us continue our mission and get the word to the world. We can only do it with your generous support. Visit us online at relevantkingdomcenter.com slash give. Relevant Kingdom Center is one church in two locations, Eczema, Bahamas and Port Charlotte, Florida. Be our guest and visit any one of our campuses. RKC. It's not just another church, it's a movement.